So, uh, so once again, thank you um, for allowing me to uh, present for a few minutes um, at this whole conference. Um, thank you for all those who have done the work to get it prepared. And for all those who, you know, day after day, month after month, are making sure that Heal uh, is doing great work in our community. So I want to thank you for that. And also special thanks to Bakersfield College and Dr. Christian for allowing us and supporting us in, in developing a contact tracing class. Um, because part of this convers part of my presentation is going to talk about, uh, you know, what the public health science department at BC is doing, our little piece in terms of contact tracing and fighting uh, COVID. So I'm gonna start out by things that we all, most of us know and would agree upon uh, that contact tracing is an essential tool um, in, in, fighting the, in fighting the spread of an infectious disease. It's been used um, effectively against uh, the H1N1 pandemic and also Ebola outbreaks uh, a couple of years ago. It is also one of the building blocks of any public health response, uh, others being adequate supplies of PPE, um, expanding testing, and ensuring that states have an ample capacity for a surge uh, uh, will, that will come in based on infections. Lastly, to summarize this slide, effective use of contact tracing is a critical step in decreasing, in decreasing the number of COVID-19 cases. So let's talk a little bit about California and then we'll get into the Central Valley. Um, in May of this year, uh, uh, Governor Newsom uh, launched the uh, California Connected, which is a program that uh, was aimed at uh, bringing folks together to train 10,000 contact tracers statewide so that we could reopen California. Uh, what we found out that in many cases, um, uh, contact tracing has met with different levels of success. Um, not only in California, not only in the Central Valley, but across the nation as a whole. Um, even though Dr. Anthony Fauci is quoted as saying, it's not going well. I Many contact tracing is not going very well. And there are reasons for that. You know, um, uh, there are some things that we don't have any control over that we can't worry about or control. But there are other things that as public health professionals, health educators, community organizations, uh, departments of health, the things that we do control that we could sort of try to work on. And um, uh, let me share some of the things that in doing my little research and doing some reading, uh, what I found out is some of the difficulties, uh, some of the reasons why uh, we're having um, low contact tracing levels, um, um, sluggish and stalled contact tracing. And um, so the first one is, um, uh, Folks, um, you know, uh, are fearful. Many are fearful and embarrassed um, when they're contacted by a contact tracer. You know, um, many. I think it was as it was alluded to some of the other other presenters. Uh, they're, they're fearful. Um, uh, they're, they're concerned that they'll be quarantined, uh, or they have to quarantine, and therefore can't work. And if they can't work, uh, they lose their paycheck. Uh, they can't pay their rent. So uh, there are many problems in terms of when folks who are dealing with COVID and, and, and um, um, uh, they're being contacted and trying to walk through all this, uh, many things that are not being taken into consideration. I think as was mentioned, some of the policies are well intended, but they don't quite, have, they don't quite um, 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 work at the grassroots level. Um, secondly, um, as we know, in, in, in the Central Valley and across the California, um, we have huge immigrant populations who worry uh, that whatever, whatever information they may provide to the authority, may provide to the contact tracer, may be shared with authorities. So once again, you know, someone has COVID, they're being contacted, they don't want to release that information because they're not, they have concerns what will happen with it, you know. And some, you know, just decline because they're embarrassed. And in general, in general, and I think this was mentioned a couple of times, which I, I want to echo those messages. In general, there's a distrust, you know, of the authorities, and many folks refuse to share information. This is especially true among minority communities, and as we've heard and we know, um, minority communities, black and Hispanic, brown, uh, black and brown communities, are some of those most highly hit by COVID-19. You know, so. Um, 
we know it's important to do contact tracing. We determine that. Um, there are some difficulties uh, with uh, uh, efficient and effective contact tracing. And there's some, uh, some other things that we're hearing about, uh, which may be part of why there's a um, sort of um, low levels of contact tracing. Um, some areas in the valley are only doing case investigations. So, which is partially good, it means they're reaching out to the infected people, tell them to quarantine, but they're not asking them about close contacts or where they've been recently, you know. The whole essence of contact tracing is contact and trace those who've been in contact with somebody who has the disease. So with case investigations only, yes, we do catch uh, um, infected people, but we're not catching those who they may have been in contact with. And some, new, uh, some, epi, uh, some researchers indicate that, you know, there's no place in the world that successfully limited transmissions without a contact tracing program. So this, so the key here is it's crucially important that we have an effective um, uh, contact, trace, contact tracing program in place in the Central Valley in order to be able to capture those others um, who may be asymptomatic, but may also have COVID-19. Um, once again, this is not a, a comprehensive, all in all, you know, six month study of what, what the keys to success are. But I would say the following, okay? Number one, the key thing is to partner with local groups, okay? Uh, each group doing their part in terms of uh, they, the part they can play in contact tracing. We at BC, we have a contact tracing course, which I'll discuss in the next slide. But in the meantime, key stakeholders, local groups, need to be a, a, a partner with to deploy contact traces. The county department of health usually is the, the, the lead in terms of uh, you know, public health for any particular community. But in that same community, there are trusted members of the community, their stakeholders, their community-based organizations and nonprofit organizations, their local churches and civic organizations. These are the groups on the ground that are, that are trusted by the community. They're trusted um, and uh, there's confidence in them where they may not be confident in some of the, the policies coming from higher up. You know, as somebody said, instead of top down, it should be bottom up. So if we're able to have contact, you know, train contact tracers and work with these community organizations um, to then do the contact tracing, I think we'd be much more effective. You know, if, if uh, you know, somebody living in community X is contacted by a contact tracer who lives in community X, or comes from a local church, or comes from a nonprofit that's respected, they're more likely uh, to get a response. And as we've you know, established, it's hugely important to the contact tracing. So all playing their part. The part that we're playing, um, at least in the public health department at Bakersfield College, is we're training uh, contact tracers. We're a college, we educate, we train, that's our piece. And I'm sure that nursing is doing a lot as well in the community. Um, but for our part, we do this education and this training. And let me just share with you uh, as my last slide, um, uh, the information on our contact tracing class, uh, just to make sure that you know, our folks are aware of it. Uh, we've had, as I mentioned, uh, about one, two, three, about six sessions already, trained about 180 people who are now, uh, who've, who've one credit, one college credit, um, and it's in contact tracing. We just had our last class, September the 14th. We have another one on the 28th. And if there's more demand, we'll, we'll uh, uh, open up additional classes. So here's the key. Some folks need to be training and educated, which our colleges are doing, that's one piece. Then there needs to be uh, uh, collaborations and working together with the Department of Health and local organizations to now deploy those contact traces. You know? So here are the key things that I wanted to mention for this uh, presentation. One, the, imp the importance of contact tracing. I think we know that. Two, to make it effective and efficient, we need to reach out uh, to local communities, trusted, trusted members of the community um, to uh, um, uh, be deployed as contact tracers. And three, they need to be training for contact tracers, which is where we come in. You know? So um, I wanted to echo what was, uh, what's been talked about earlier, that um, 
it's important to make sure that we are engaging members in, in the local community um, to be effective. You know? We know that contact tracing is effective when done inefficiently and appropriately. That's true. But we also know that unless we have people on the ground, unless they're trusted groups uh, that um, people on the other end who are, who are being called, unless they trust the person on the phone, they may not want to give that information. So for us to have a successful contact tracing program in the Central Valley, train, educate, one, which can be done by BC and other groups, two, working with the Department of Health and local organizations to deploy those contact traces and go beyond uh, our case or case investigations, which those are good to identify those who have the disease, but there's additional piece. To, 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 to arrest this transmission, we need to do contact tracing. That way, those who may be asymptomatic may be contacted, may be contacted, and they can quarantine or they can do what they need to do to make sure they don't pass it on to somebody else. So that's pretty much what I have for this afternoon. Um, my information is at the bottom of this uh, flyer here. It's charles.garamola at, at bakersforcard.edu. You can contact me. And overall, um, you know, uh, whether it's uh, public health or nursing, uh, as, as a college, we're doing our part to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we do our best to, to battle this, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Daramola. And we have a couple of minutes, and so I have one question for you. Coronavirus detectives, contact tracers, who can identify the chain of COVID-19 transmission are playing a crucial role in helping stop the spread of the virus, just much like you said. But what has been some of your most rewarding and challenging experiences in training contact tracers? And how can community members become contact tracers? You kind of answered the second part of that, but sure. share with us your rewarding and challenging experiences. Sure. Uh, the most rewarding, I would say, is um, when we first put out the announcement that um, we had a contact tracing class, we had such a, a demand. There was such an excitement, enthusiasm, Folks wanted to be involved. We had to like close some of the classes because they were full and we kept on adding new classes. So the excitement, the enthusiasm of folks who were, you know, community members, college students, folks who are health professionals who wanted to get a contact tracing class. That enthusiasm shows that, you know, people were willing and wanted to be involved in the battle against uh, COVID-19. So that was very encouraging. Um, it was, um, it was um, you know, um, it was good. Um, so that's the most uh, uh, rewarding, you know. And uh, uh, the most challenging is um, some of the things that I've, I guess, been reading and hearing that um, the case investigations being done, which means they contact the person uh, who has the disease um, and tell them to quarantine, but not finding out who they have been with or who they've been in contact with, you know. So which means one person who had the disease, yes, we have that quarantine, but how about all the others that they were in contact with? So that means they're not being contacted in many cases, not in all cases, in some day, I'm sure. So that's a little difficult in terms of the importance of contact tracing, um, the need for us to um, do more, uh, to make sure that um, not only the person who's infected, but other people who've been around and been involved with them, that they, they, they are contacted as well, we make sure that we give them appropriate, you know, counseling, whether it's for, for them to quarantine, to go get tested. I think that's important because we're not, I don't think we're doing enough of that. It's a little frustrating. 